Welcome to Undertale Comic TV. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you'll never miss a video. Enjoy! Hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. This is a stupidly big mug. <laughs> it's cinnamon tea. It'll make you feel better. We really screwed up, huh? Mm. It would be better if I left. How do you even drink from this? You should pick a smaller mug next time. OMG. <coughs> <coughs> uh, it's in my nose. Oh. Did you make this tea just to make that joke? Ah, uh, it burns! <laughs> hey, you're smiling, right? <laughs> no. Why do you suck on the nuts? Shut up, Bonehead! Poof. Or maybe because your name is <laughs> Nutsuki? <laughs> Oh my god. I don't know what it is, but it tugs at my house a bit. Don't ever take it off, okay? <laughs> All right, idiot. Uh, thank you for being my best friend. Car is in love, the one that's destined to struggle in endless night. The one that they call a demon is in love. If all the blessings were sent from heaven, then Frisk was the chosen one. Like the first ray of sunlight at dawn, they went through all the pain, all the sorrow, all the withered wishes. And then, the one that's destined to bring peace. The one they call Angel. Killed the first frog. By the time Frisk's right in front of Kara, Frisk's not the blessed one anymore. Their shoes are covered in dried blood. Their hands are dusted with the perished souls. Their eyes were staring at Kara with nothing inside. No goodness, no evil. Not even desire. <laughs> so Kara killed Frisk. It's not that Kara doesn't love Frisk anymore. It's because Kara loved Frisk so deeply. It's not that Kara started to hate Frisk. It's because Kara hated themselves so much. It's just that Kara found Frisk walking down such a familiar path. The one Kara has chosen a long time ago. <laughs> so that's how Kara killed the one they love.
I... I know you must be confused at this time. But... I have to tell you something. Do you remember the first time you arrived? <laughs> I remember all the times when you arrived, but... The first time was magical. It all started in a dark day. And after a light... It was a foggy morning. I was at my usual place, waiting for something. Hmm. But after a while I decided to go to the doors of the ruins. But, as I feared, there was no one. Hmm. I was about to turn back when I heard a sound. Hmm. And when I turned, I saw you. I saw you. You were running in the fog. I hid in the trees and I was watching you. I couldn't look away. Hmm. You were falling into the cell. Like an angel. After that day I waited and lusted daily for your back and your every reset. But every time you were away and I had to kill you because because because, because I I don't know about you. You run and I fall to kill you because although offered you the food, you were resistant, and you were terrified of me, and again, and again, and again, and again. Why? Why do you not look at me in the face? I told you, turn around, turn around, look at me, look at me! If you do not open your eyes, I'll open them myself. Look at me! Open your eyes! Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm sorry, princess. Next time will be better. I'm sorry, princess. But I cannot resist. I love everything about you. Your sweet face, your beautiful screams, your innocence. But the thing I love most about you <laughs> is your sweet mate. <laughs> hmm? There it is again, princess. You look hungry. I just have something special done with my hands. <laughs> what? <laughs> I worked hard to prepare it. After all this time, I have perfected the recipe. You can define a job to three hands. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not feel stomach cramps? <laughs> You would not want to take a bite. Where the heck is that dork? I'm dying! I'm back! Sorry, were you waiting? Did you wait long? Cut to the chase, rookie. You said you had an update on the human? Uh, oh, yes, right. Uh, I, I did. Uh, I remembered something and decided to, um, uh, uh, check my notes uh, on the human who I made notes about. And after checking the notes on the human that I made, which is what I was doing, I can report that the human is definitely 100% not wearing a gross bandage. Not at all. And so, if you see someone wearing a gross bandage, it's not the human. Because the human isn't wearing one. So, if you see someone who is wearing a gross bandage, you really shouldn't violently murder them. Because they're not the human. <laughs> is that so? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. I even double-checked to make sure. 
You can count on me, Untied. Oh, good. Because I'd hate to find out you've been lying <laughs> to me. But then you wouldn't lie to me, would you, Papyrus? Yeah, of course not. <laughs> and I, I never lie to you. I never lie about anything, and even if I did, you'd know I was lying because I'm really bad at it. Uh, not that you'd ever see that, because I never lie, so I'm not lying. Well, that's a relief. Because, you know, anyone training to become a royal guard should know better than to lie to me. I can't let people I don't trust into the royal guard, after all. Which is how you know I'm not lying. Uh, you, you, you know how long I've been trying to become a royal guard? <laughs> mm. I see. You, um, you want I should come as backup? No, I think you've helped enough. Stay here until I call you. Roger that, Captain! I'll guard the area and make sure the human doesn't double back. And remember what I said about the gross bandage. Oh! I will never be a royal guard. going on. You become a royal guard so people will like you and you can protect your friends. But when someone cool actually does like you, you have to lie to the royal guard to protect them. Why is this so hard? The human is nice. They're my friend. And Undyne's my friend too. There aren't any bad guys in this situation. There's no reason for it to be this difficult. I'm... Super cool friend, the great Papyrus, will look out for you. <laughs> I will never be a royal guard. 